Good evening, you're on the air. Hi, Bill. This is Michelle from Oklahoma. Hi, Michelle. How are you? Hi, I wanted to talk to you about adventures with the news media. Oh, good. Give it to us. Sock <laughs> well, it to me. Okay. <laughs> well, I had a call this morning from uh, one of the local newscasters from our ABC affiliate in Oklahoma City. And she wanted to talk to me about the definitions of malicious. And her main problem was that more and more groups are appearing on their little limited horizon, calling themselves malicious. And we put out a press release the other day saying that the Freemen were not. And she wanted to know <laughs> how you could tell the difference. <laughs> 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 well, the, the Freemen have never claimed, number one, to be a militia. Uh, and if they hadn't separated themselves and denied the authority of the state, then if the militia had been called up by the governor, they would certainly have to muster as members if they're in the age group under the law. Right. Well, I told her that, uh, I think it was David Trockman, one of the Trockman's sons, had been on uh, CNN and he'd been on the local uh, shortwave patriot uh, radio program saying that uh, the Freemen were not the militia. The Freemen had said they didn't want any part of the militia, and they don't want any of the militia messing with them. That's true. And I also reiterated to her that the Freemen, having set up their own little country, were in a state of insurrection against the United States of America, and that set them outside of the set of constitutional laws and state laws under which we live, and so they can't claim constitutional rights, they're outside of those, and they can't be a militia under those conditions. Yes, in, in fact, one of their tenets, one of the reasons they call themselves freemen is that they believe that when the Constitution was executed, it created a corporate state in conjunction with the states and uh, and, and uh, took away the sovereign rights of the individuals and of the states. And so they claim that they're outside of all of that. They don't even recognize the Constitution for the United States as being uh, any kind of authority over them. Well, we can't live like that. Well, we can't. Maybe they can. I admire uh, anyone who who uh, professes a belief and takes a stand based upon those beliefs as long as they're not hurting anyone else. Um, but you have to understand that when you do that, you also have to take the consequences and the responsibility that goes along with it. And anyone who does that, I said it, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, when when the uh, Freemen uh, were were doing some things up there, and then later, um, when they got arrested for going into the courthouse uh, with a weapon or whatever it was, I forget the, you know, don't take me verbatim here because. They got arrested in a courthouse, and I'm not sure now exactly what happened, although we covered it pretty extensively back then. Um, I said then, uh, you know, that, uh, that uh, sooner or later, when you put yourself in that position, in direct opposition to the powers that exist, uh, sooner or later they have to come after you, and they will. Well, I did express to this gal... Uh, the fact that it would be extremely difficult for us to live in a country with a multiplicity of judicial systems, which was an issue that you touched on last night. Yes. And, of course, she agreed with that and everything. Uh, and, and what was causing, well, what's causing me some problems uh, are the alleged attitudes of the neighbors of the uh, ranch or farm that's uh, adjoining the Freeman property uh, where they're saying, well, if the feds won't bring them out, we're going in and we'll try to do it peaceably and if they won't come out, we'll take them out. Of course, we don't want that. Then there was that news flash on the uh, subscriber list about the Michigan militia going in support. Yeah, I'm going to read that uh, statement by Norm Olson later in uh, the broadcast. Yeah, and, and we've had Viking International Radio telling all the militia to go out there and I don't Personally, my opinion is I don't think that's a very good idea at this stage. It's not a good idea at all, period, unless we see another uh, Waco uh, or Ruby Ridge taking place. Then uh, then we're, we're forced to. It's our duty. Right. Well, we haven't seen that developing yet. No, they're, they're doing everything uh, with restraint. They have uh, lawful warrants. They're trying to execute them in a decent manner. And one of my uh, one of my uh, 
uh, tenets is that if these people are right, they should be able to prove it in court. Correct. And if the United States uh, federal court does not have, or circuit court does not have jurisdiction over them, if they challenge that jurisdiction in a lawful manner, uh, they should be able to win. Uh, if, if they can't win initially, they can always appeal it to a higher court. They can take it all the way to the Supreme Court. And uh, I have never seen anything go to the Supreme Court that was decided on against the law. I have seen that happen in the lower courts where they will intentionally uh, go against the law to get their way against someone uh, that, that, that they don't like or they consider to be politically correct, in, incorrect, I should say, uh, and, and on, the, on the basis that most people will not have the money or the time or the ability to affect a, uh, a, a, a successful appeal. So, uh, and, and in many cases, that's, that's true. But... Uh, well, this thing has become just excessively propagandized here in Oklahoma. Well, as you can well imagine, with all the preparations for the different memorial things, the bombing going on, and any time they can flash the flag militia in front of the public, they do so. And I've been doing backflips to try to keep those flags from being totally negative. Uh, and I just got to thinking, uh, you know, what I was telling this gal on the phone this morning is, okay, let's say you've got a group and they want to call themselves a militia, and you go and you interview their public information officer, assuming they even have one, right? Uh, right. And you ask them under what authorization they exist, under what law they exist, and so forth and so on. And those militias, if they're legitimate, ought to be able to tell you. in essence, are just taking the law into their own hands and acting like vigilantes, these guys don't have a clue what's going on. And if they're operating outside of the law, we've got a problem. If they're inside the law, then no matter what comes against them, if they stick it out, they'll be able to stand up for themselves in court and present their case logically, rationally, legally, and, and survive that experience. It doesn't all have to be everything is a force of arms. That's correct. Uh, and, and it's just getting really a little bit ridiculous out here. It's making my job very, very difficult for some of these groups calling themselves militias who don't know what their legal standing is in the law. She kept telling me about the three men calling themselves militia. I said, they're not calling themselves a militia. They have never called themselves militia. Well, I know. But she said, but they have, they have. I said, no, haven't you just heard that? Through the mainstream press, wasn't that an AP release? Well, no, no, they said they're a militia. I said, look. If you want to do this right, what you do is you go and you pull the statute from the state of Montana that defines the militia. All the states have the definition, usually in 25 words or less, and you say, okay, well, here's what the state says is the definition of militia. These people say they are one, but I guess they're not. And then you just say that publicly on the news. Yeah. That was too much work for her. Oh, well, well, really, what I would have done is I would have said, well, since you know that they have said that they are the militia, maybe you can produce that quote on tape or in writing uh, where they specifically are quoted verbatim as saying that they are the militia. And I'll bet you uh, in a hundred years you won't find that because it's never happened. Um, and, and that usually uh, puts the binders on it because... They're, they're saying things that they know are not true because that's what they're supposed to do is promote a political agenda. Yes, uh, one of the, the biggest subject matters that I've been trying to push around here through the media is that we are not advocating the violent overthrow of any government. No, that is not the purpose of the militia. The purpose of the militia is to uphold uh, the government, the supreme law of the land, enforce the laws of the union, suppress insurrection, repel invasion, and uh, and it's the people's last line of defense against a government who would overthrow the supreme law of the land to become oppressive or dictatorial. Right. When uh, Jerry Bonin of KPOK uh, Radio was interviewing me yesterday, and he said, well, a major more, uh, then I guess you would have to say that you are not an anti-government group. And when I told him that I was not an anti-government group favoring the overthrow, especially the violent overthrow of our government, he just about lost it and had a little bit of trouble recovering thereafter. 
um, because they really do expect everybody to, you know, say, down with the leftist pigs and this sort of thing. And they may be leftist pigs, but we have a system under which we operate at this time, and I personally am not ready yet to deal with anarchy. Uh, I think that there are a lot of stages and steps we can take in between now and that, should it ever occur. Anarchy is not my first choice ever. Anarchy is just as bad as, as total, complete despotism. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. It's the opposite extreme. It's where if I, if I like your hair <laughs> and I want it, I can just chop your head off and take your hair and nobody cares because uh, that's what anarchy is, is. You do what you want to do when you can and if nobody's strong enough to prevent it, you prevail. Right. Well, I think if people would stop and think a minute uh, before they open their mouths to the press. That's the second time tonight somebody has dared to assume that the sheeple can think. And it really is making me angry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Bill. I don't want to make you angry. Uh, I'm just an eternal optimist, I guess. You know, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. <laughs> and I just, uh, I no. don't want to expect the worst. But really, it, it, the minute that somebody brings up a legitimate argument like, you know, the IRS is not legit or the, the Federal Reserve is not federal, all these things that we know to be true and have seen proven in the documents, automatically you're classified as an anti-government group and the media equate that with violent overthrow. And we've got to make this clear. And the militias that are out there that are legit have got to establish some kind of a public information system where we answer these baloney claims that the media make, these, these blatant generalizations that they make about us, and just answer them. Well, we do that. Our organization does well, that. Well, I know. And there are a few uh, other organizations who are, are, are beginning to do that. And I'm going to read one of those press releases tonight, too. Hold on, Michelle. I'll be right back. Okay. This was the uh, CBS News on uh, March the 26th, ladies and gentlemen. They let off the nightly TV news about an item about the Freeman in Montana. The report mentioned that the Freeman are threatening the feds and so on and so forth. We've all heard the rhetoric. But one interesting thing the report mentioned is that the Freeman are said to have threatened to blow up a commercial aircraft. In the interview recently of Stuart Webb with Brother Stare on shortwave mentioned that the powers that be are threatening to blow up an aircraft between April the 17th and 19th, and they will blame the militia and patriots. Well, we know that Stuart Webb is a, is a disinformation agent. Uh, he's He was caught in the act a couple of times and totally discredited. And uh, we know that he's a fake. But doesn't it seem odd that he and CBS News mentioned exactly the same thing? Perhaps uh, uh, we're going we're gonna to hear some more about that, but I wanted you to know about that before we go on. Michelle, are you still there? I am. Okay, well, you find that interesting. I do also. indeed. <laughs> I've always found the, the uh, disinformation of Stuart Webb somewhat uh, entertaining, let's just put it that way. Yeah, him and his friend Trenton Parker. Well, they seem to certainly be tuned in, plugged in to another information source, and, uh, well, I can't make any speculations about it, but I don't trust the guy. I don't trust him as far as I could throw him, and I'm not very strong. <laughs> 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 well, I don't mean to tie up your phone line when there are other callers who are going to call in, but I did want to say that uh, in Oklahoma right now we're dealing with a situation that is reaching the point of hysteria uh, with the media and the militias because all of a sudden they've been confronted with here's the definition of militia, here's what the duties of militia are, and here's how they legally and lawfully exist and what they do. And at the same time, to be confronted with a lot of little splinter groups or wannabes or people who are genuinely concerned but haven't yet really organized properly, calling themselves militia, uh, making statements or being interviewed, and they don't know how to deal with the press, and they don't really know what to say, and they haven't done their homework. And some of the people from the press I've talked to are genuinely concerned about this confusion, and they want to see it resolved. Others don't really care. Uh, the ones that want to see it resolved, all I can do is refer them back to the law, and they're not really going to deal with that. So I would just encourage the people that are forming militias and trying to get established right 
to look into their, their state constitutions and their state statutes so that you have a 25-word or less explanation for who you are and what you do that doesn't touch upon your grievances. Your but, grievances are separate from the definition of why and how you exist. Well, that's what a lot of these people don't understand, Michelle, is the militia has absolutely nothing to do with their grievances or their religion right. or anything else that they do. When they meet as a militia, it is as a military organization formed under the laws of the state and of the United States for a specific purpose. It has nothing to do with a religious pur purpose. It has nothing to do with the Federal Reserve isn't federal, or the IRS isn't, uh, isn't operating within the law, or any of that stuff. You cannot even bring that into the militia. It has nothing to do with the militia. Right. And, and one of the big things floating here right now is over in Harper County, there has been a group of people about a year ago formed called themselves the Free Men, have set up two or three different... Uh, totally segregated, meaning separate from our system, uh, Supreme Courts of their own. Not even <laughs> part of the common law courts. I know. They, these people are crazy. They're wackos. Uh, well, yeah, they are. And, and But the, the media is confused. They think that they are us. They think that they are the Freeman in Montana, and they're lumping us all in this big ball of wax. And outside of the Freeman in Montana, here's the feds. And so all of us are now becoming the enemy. You know how to put them on the spot? What do you recommend, Bill? Oh, it's very easy. <laughs> they say, well, you're the press, aren't you? Mm -hmm. They say, yes. Pull out a copy of the spotlight and say, well, this is the press, isn't it? They say, yes. I say, well, you're the same people. Watch them turn apoplectic and fall right out of their chair. Oh, God. <laughs> because that's what, I mean, that's what you have to do. You have to put it in perspective. Well, I think we gave a few people apoplexy over the past 24 hours around here. Well, I'm sure you did. <laughs> it's going to be all right. But uh, it, people have got to understand their foundation in the law, separate it out from their beefs, and then when they have their beefs, get whoever your best public speaker is in your group to clearly outline those things so they can present, be presented coherently logically, and then document it to the press if the press should ask. Yes, and, and it's, it's also important that they know the history of the militia and yes. that they have a foundation in the statements about the militia and the intent uh, of the founding fathers when they put the second article amendment in the, uh, in the uh, Bill of Rights and when they uh, made, uh, uh, made specific... Uh, allowance for the for the militia to exist in this country well yes and and uh, an issue too that often comes up here with our media uh, are the different groups that call themselves militias that are really just um, church groups or um, people who are grouped around one particular political perspective or one particular politics does, politics does not belong in the militia race does not belong in the militia well, that's what I told them. I said, you just can't have your little vigilante groups going around saying, you've got to believe what I believe or you're the enemy. Well, you know, in my estimation, that makes them the enemy when they do that. Because if I don't look like them, or if I don't go to the same church they go to, uh, if, if they ever came to power, they're going to tie me to a stake and, and pile faggots around my, my feet and set them on fire. That's what people like that do, if they, if they actually get into power. What I told ABC today when we were discussing that issue was that as soon as a group does that, they have put themselves outside of our constitutional guidelines where everybody has the same constitutionally protected rights, and at that point they become the arms band of dissidents who wants everybody to think like they think. And you can't protect that. You can't support that. Uh, because for me to say that, well, I'm a female and you're a male, therefore you're the enemy, if we were going to draw the line there. Or uh, somebody has blonde hair and I have brunette hair and we draw the line there. You can't, you can't do that. It's, it's got to be based on some overall scheme of things, the scheme being the constitutional guidelines under which we live. When we step outside of that, then I assume that we are, would be in, in a state of insurrection.
You're absolutely correct. And the militia cannot be an insurrection. The no. militia cannot... It's supposed to repel. That's right. The militia cannot be the invader, cannot be the insurrectionist. The militia cannot break the laws of the Union because the purpose of the militia is to protect and enforce and, and, uh, and uh, take care of those things. Well, if people need to just sit down a minute and take a deep breath and think through what they're doing. You did it again. Oh, <laughs> it, well, I'm going to give them credit, Bill. I'm going to say that they can think and I'm going to believe, I'm going to believe with all my heart that they can be logical for maybe two seconds long enough to just say, okay, this is what we stand for. These are our guidelines. This is our legal standing. Here are our grievances. Keep them all separate. Keep them all categorized. Come up with short, little, clear, concise statements and move out from there. That's right. Otherwise, it's all, it's all just a big jumbled mess and we're in trouble. That's correct. Militia meetings have to be meetings for the purpose of the military training and preparation of the militia to do its constitutional duty. Uh, religious meetings cannot be convened in, uh, in a militia meeting, and neither can political meetings, and neither can, uh, can uh, speeches about the Federal Reserve and all this other stuff. It has no bearing whatsoever. Everything has its proper time and place. That's right. Well, I better clear your line. I've monopolized it far too long, but I sure appreciate talking to you, Bill. Well, I thank you for calling in and, and uh, contributing. To well, you have a great evening, and God bless everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Bye-bye. Good night. Uh, second question. You have, you have admonished us many times to believe nothing until you check it out. That's correct. Now, I don't wish to toss you a curve, but i got I, I got to ask you a question concerning the, the Second Continental Army of the Republic. Yes. How would we check this out? How would you check what out? The existence thereof. The only person I know of who's involved in is you. Uh, that's not true. You just heard the, uh, the commander of four states speaking. Her name is Michelle Moore. I just thought she was your uh, section chief down in the... She's the station chief for the intelligence service for the Second Continental Army of the Republic. She is a commissioned officer. She is a major. She commands four states. Okay. Are there any... She has quite a few people under her command. Okay. Uh, are there any documentation, or is there any documentation uh, that we could check on this individually? Uh, are you kidding? Uh, we, we are not... Uh, we are not uh, John Trockman or the people that you see drug across the 6 o'clock news. Right. I, I, I we, we exist for the purpose of restoring government when and if the time comes that we have to do that. Okay. All righty. I thank you kindly. You're welcome. Have yourself a good evening. Enjoy Crossfire. Thank you. Right. Thank you uh, for your call.